On my desk in the back corner, I keep a candy jar that many of you have come by to visit every so often. I often joke that I have the candy, bar, candy jar only so I can make sure that I have some friends on this floor. Uh, it's a joke that I make and it's kind of funny, but the real reason I have that candy jar is because I enjoy those moments where you and I can come together over a non-political moment and talk about the issues of your life, not on politics, not on I issues that we're facing that day, but about your children, about what is happening in your life, and about what is going on with your families. And what I've learned from the members in this body is that you're all good people. You are all genuinely concerned about your communities. You are all driven to this house at this moment because you care about the lives around you. You care about your neighbors, about your friends, about the PTA. You care about those who are different. You care about those who may not share your documentation or your heritage or your religion. You care about Texas, and that's why you're here, and for no other reason. Representative Enchi is one of my very best friends in the House of Representatives. In fact, he's probably my best friend in my council and one of my mentors. He and I have spent a great deal of time talking about these issues and trying to wrestle through them. He and I disagree on this issue. We wrestle with the pain that we've witnessed from those committee chambers out on those front steps. I'm a Republican and I'm a Latino. I share the experience of my brothers and sisters in Malk. In fact, I'm a member of Malk. People will often say, well, Vialba's different. He's a Republican. He wears a fancy suit. He's a, he works for a, a, a law firm and a white shoe law firm and spends his time mostly with Anglos. My mother was born in Chiapas, Mexico. She didn't speak English until she was five years old. She married, her mother was a missionary from the United States who married a small country pastor in Mexico. When she moved to this country at five years old, she was discriminated against. She felt the sting and the ugliness of racism, called a spick, a wet back, a dirty Mexican. So when I hear these stories about pain, I know what that pain feels like. My mother knows what that pain feels like. I was a young boy growing up to different than those in my neighborhood. Spick, wet back, dirty Mexican. I'll never forget my very first law firm experience. I was going to a dinner. I pulled up in my jalopy, dressed as well as a poor Mexican could dress. And they said, well, you should be in the back because that's where the help is gonna arrive. I know what it feels like to be different. I know what it feels like to be the other. I know what it feels like to feel the sting of that pain. Make no mistake, members. We are drawn together by our experiences, and I can tell you today that I know what that fear is like. And I have some credibility on this, members. I was the only elected official in the country to speak out against Donald Trump publicly. I'm the only member in this House, other than the Speaker of the House, who came out against the bathroom bill, both versions. I stand here today because I care about my community. I identify not as a Mexican-American, but as an American. And in America, we are bound by laws. 
Members, this is a common sense bill. It just says this. If you are here and you are undocumented and you have violated some law and been detained or arrested, we're going to send you back to your community, your country of origin. My abuelita, who speaks only broken English and lives in Raphael's district in South North Oak Cliff, told me before I came down, Jason, I don't feel safe in my own neighborhood. We've got gang members, MS-13, on my, on my block. I need you to take care of all of us. Be damned with the political correctness of these kinds of issues. Members, I implore you today, as you think through these measures, it is not about a Republican Party primary. It is not about the politics of our day. It is not about our president who speaks to these issues in a way that is disrespectful. Chairman Anchia, why do we have this bill? We have this bill because there are people in our communities who we care about feel unsafe. Regardless of whether or not you agree with the policy, they believe that. And they believe that a common sense measure that sends people home who've done something wrong back to their country of origin is a common sense, straightforward position. Members, I thank you for your time. I invite you to come have some candy. I have filled back the jar. And I thank you for being a friend. And I'm blessed to serve with you and blessed to know you. Mr. Anchia, for what purpose? Will the gentleman yield for some questions? Mr. Vialba, do you I have a question? I will. Gentleman yields. So, Jason, you say people feel unsafe in the state of Texas today, right? And that this bill will make it better. That was your allegation right now. I believe that. Yes, sir. You believe that. What, per what percentage of people that are currently issued ICE detainers or for whom ICE detainers are issued are uh, denied? Mr. Chairman, do you know? That is not the question. You it sure may, it is. Because be. if you're saying under the current regime that people feel unsafe and 99.78% of ICE detainers are complied with, you're suggesting that there's something wrong with ICE detainers. Mr. Chairman, what complying I Complying with ICE detainers. Mr. Chairman, what I know is when I knock on the door of the little old lady, when I deliver Meals on Wheels, and I talk to her about what she's concerned about, what I hear from her is fear. Regardless of whether or not that fear is founded or unfounded, my job to her is to make sure that she doesn't feel fear. And, and, I'm sorry and would you numbers, agree with me, Mr. I'm sorry, Villalba? The, I'm sorry if the numbers don't support that. Yeah, the numbers don't support that, but Mr. That's Villalba. Not my, that's not why I act. I act to make sure that she feels safe. Oh, my gosh. You don't act based on data. You act based on emotion. Is that what you're suggesting right not now? Not at all. Not okay. A, not, it's, not all, you are, it's not all what I've said. And hate is a pretty damn good emotion. It's a pretty good motivator for action, isn't it? S sir, again. And I'm not suggesting it's yours, but it may be the motivation for people who do not feel safe, despite the fact that Texas complies with more ice sir, detainers than any other state sir, in the country. Sir, are you, you have, also you aware? have stood on the front mic several times this session and impugn the good reputations of the men and women in this body by how you feel. You feel they're racist. You feel that they're not being appropriate. I'm saying to you Jason, today... Jason, I never called we're, you we're, out. We're, now we're, I'm calling you out because you mentioned my name and I, I want to have this conversation. Let's have it. Do immigrants commit more crimes than native-born people? There's of, data of, on this. Of course not. Of course not. And, and Texas commits complies with ICE detainers almost 100% of the time, correct? I'm not familiar with that. I'm not advised. So you don't know the data, but I'll, would you agree? Would I'm, you, would you, I'm assuming based on the data that you've presented to me that that is do, an Do you have statement. any reason to suggest that it's inaccurate? I do not. Okay. So the data suggests that immigrants do not commit crimes, they commit less crimes less than native 
born, and that the current system where ICE detainers are complied with is almost at 100%, yet people feel unsafe. Why is that? Why do they feel unsafe? I believe that the answer to that, again, I open my comments by saying all of us come from different backgrounds and, and different communities. Gentlemen's time's expired.